Real quick, to get rolling, let's see a quick show of hands. How many of you are data scientists? Raise your hands if you like to do regression models in R on Saturday nights. Cool. OK. Raise your hands if you're HR generalists, HR associates, coordinators, consultants, people people. Very good. OK. Now, raise your hands if you're fans of the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> oh. All right, I know that I don't have any friends here. Well, it doesn't matter that the majority, a majority of you are not data scientists. What does matter is that you have domain expertise. Now, it goes without saying that today, the entry of barrier for technical knowledge to use AI is high. If I said to most of you, go home and start using AI, you'd be like, how? One of the primary reasons why is it goes beyond just knowing software development. You have to have expertise in whatever method or process of AI that you're looking to deploy. If that's you know, convolutional neural networks, if that's natural language processing, if that's computer vision. But the good news is over the next three to five years, the technical barrier of entry is going to come down absolutely significantly. However, your domain knowledge that you have in HR is still going to remain a critical piece to the puzzle. So using AI in the future will be just as ubiquitous and usable as using cloud computing today. Now we can ask, why do we even need AI in HR? HR is human resources, right? Why do we want to potentially bring killer robots into the workplace? Well, we could say for efficiency, for automation, and for insights. But it's actually much more than all that because H, uh, AI can crunch more data and it can crunch more granular data better than most processes that exist today. In a recent survey from HR Open Source, they identified as a canvas of uh, respondents that are in the HR segment that AI, as well as data and analytics, are the top two technologies that will impact HR in the coming future. In addition, we also believe that we understand what processes are going to be most affected. I know it's a little hard to read, but I'm going to give you the highlights here. Employee experience, people analytics, and workforce performance are the top three areas that they feel like AI is going to bring help with. Now, that means that's a lot of data we're going to be talking about. And unlike other industries like the financial segments, the data that resides in HR is not entirely cut and dry. What data is present in HR? Well, there's a few old people in here with me. OK. <laughs> so like most people are like, what was that guy? Oh. The data that resides in HR is a bit sticky. Now, it's a combination of both subjective and objective information, or qualitative and quantitative, if you're statisticians. Some of the information well, you'll recognize with your domain, domain expertise is being ice cold in terms of measuring and understanding. These are retention rates. These are position benchmarks for compensation. These are attendance numbers, you know, in terms of calendar-based times and metrics. On the other hand, there's a lot of information that's subjective, and this is a little trickier. Pulse surveys, exit interviews, culture surveys, numerical scores on performance reviews. And this is actually a bit tricky because sometimes this information likes to parade itself around as being objective and it may not be. We have to be careful of assumptions. You know, I actually, I had a fruit the other day. It was really good. It was called a plum a granite. Anybody ever heard of one of these things? No? It's a cross, guess, it's a cross between a plum and a, no apricot. Be careful with your assumptions. Really be careful with your assumptions. And when you're working with subjective data that parades itself around as objective data, take a few steps to try to validate and make sure that it might be credible and consistent. For example, when you're gathering the data, consider using a third party to compare your results. You may be introducing bias in the process. Also consider secondary factors that could also influence results. If you're sending pulse surveys to your employees every Friday at 4.30, that's going to not only determine what the level of participation you're going to get, but what their headspace is when they're actually filling out this information. In addition, consider analysis. If your sample size is large enough, I found a lot that there are many people in HR that are working with growing and exciting teams with maybe 30 to 50 people. But if you have 
eight responses, that might not be enough to draw a conclusion. If you feel like you have a conclusion, maybe take the step of re getting respondent validation and sitting with a trusted employee, present your conclusion, and see if it makes sense and they agree with you. Now that's a good understanding of where we are at the intersection of AI and HR today, the data that resides in HR today. And I want to show you a couple of tools that are available that you can use without a high technical acumen. Now, I don't endorse these companies, I don't endorse these brands, but I think it's just a quick tour of some you know, eye-opening tools that are available where all the technology is hidden underneath the hood. Textio is a product that's familiar to many of you. It's a product that uses natural language processing to help uh, HR craft job descriptions. It gives you tone and measurement and analysis before you ever post a job online. It can tell you if, for example, it's targeting the right type of people that you're looking to get it in front of. Another product that exists, there's many like this, but there's one called Seedlink. And they help you qualify and filter your inbound candidates in recruiting without using CVs and resumes. Built off of surveys from your internal employees and culture, you can help uh, qualify or narrow down your inbound leads this way. Junco has a fun motto called the antivirus for gender bias. And basically camps out in Slack and in real time flags language that may not be conducive to an open and friendly work environment. Another product called Eva, kind of like Wally. Anybody know Wally here? All right, okay, at least a few. Um, Eva is either amazing or creepy, depending on your opinion. It sits on servers and reads emails and gets the sentiment of your employees and determines uh, if they're feeling good about their job or if they're going to leave to help you engage employee attrition before it happens. Finally, there's a tool called Talentbin. This is by Monster, and again, there's competitors like it. But it proactively goes online and goes through different social media networks to bring candidates into you without having to post the jobs. It's rather interesting, and it uses a range of machine learning to locate them. So that's a quick uh, tour through some of the products that we have today. I'm Mark Zuppi. I want to thank you very much for your time.